Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am here with some paranormal stories because I feel like it and because I think that I said I would do that when I did Collision in the Matrix the last time and I completely forgot to do that. So here I am doing it now. I actually went to Templar and said paranormal because I completely forgot what I was doing. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. The spookiest stories. I totally won't get spooked, right? Alright. Just gonna open a few of these. Oh, these are always fun. At least I know from my experience of having listened to a few of these stories that Sleep for Alice's story is always fun. Anyway, well, frick. I just had a doppelganger encounter, maybe, or a ghost encounter? I don't know. This isn't made up, this just happened to me, like, I realized what was going on like 20 minutes ago, when I went through the camp footage. I really don't know what's going on, if someone could explain this to me. I'd really appreciate it. This is my first time making an account on Reddit, so apologize for- So apologies for any slow replies. Hmm. It started last night where I came out of my room and we have the a small living room opposite my room. When I went into my living room, I saw my aunt, who was visiting for the week, laying down on the couch and watched TV. I came out to find some food, which is why I told her when she asked. She asked if I wanted her to make anything for me, and I said, No, it's alright, I'll just go downstairs to make it myself. So yeah, I went downstairs, made instant noodles for no more than 15 minutes, and I went back upstairs to put my cup down on my room. That first odd thing, we have this mini for a general living room, right? So I went to go and grab a bottle of water, and I saw that the blanket which my aunt was laying down on what was made it and the room was dark, and the TV was off. My aunt's bags weren't there either. Now this didn't trigger any concerns, because I mean, she could have just gone upstairs to sleep where the guest room is and took herself with her in the span of time it took me to make instant noodles. So I just went to sleep, and when I woke up, and went down With that breakfast, I asked my aunt why she was up so late last night. I went out at like 2 a.m. and it's an odd time to be awake, especially because my aunt is a very early sleeper. She usually sleeps at 7 or 8 p.m. She said, what do you mean? Also, all these conversations were in my native language. I'm translating it into English. Obviously, I was like, what, in the living room? She's like, what? I was sleeping upstairs It's like 8. I was like, no, I talked to you at 2 a.m. when I went to go get food. I gave up her a brief summary of the conversation. My mom just laughed and was like, Did you see a ghost? in a joking way. Now, I was extremely confused, so I told her mom to check the security footage and we saw me saying a living room was just talking to me off. And get made talking to somebody who wasn't there. My aunt and mom made thought this was kind of spooky and funny and they joked about me doing drugs. Now I was scared shit at least because one, I am a teenager, I don't do drugs, vape, drink, none of that crap. Two, I have no mental disabilities, no schizophrenic. You know how I'm not even depressed or or have anxiety. Ah, uh, you'll find out later that that's actually just the diagnosis is for teenage angst. Three, I stay up late almost every day and sleeping at 4 a.m. is a normal thing for me. So this wouldn't have been sleep deprivation. So what the fuck did I see? I know for sure I saw what I saw. I could probably describe everything in ex extreme detail, like down to every single sense. It wasn't a dream because the cup noodles were still in my room, so what the fuck was it? Can someone help explain this to me? I'm 100% positive I wasn't losing because I've never had any experiences like this before. I found it. He just thinks I, I, that I was tripping on weed or something when I don't even do drugs.
love that noise. Anyway, this one is, oh, the little flare is gone. That's sad. I think the creature we have been seeing came with me from my childhood home. I am hoping someone could help me figure out what this is and how to deal with it. I moved into this house with my fiancé and his family in August 2021. We have the entire basement, excluding the laundry room, as our space. I noticed pretty quickly I could hear footsteps going up and down the stairs. When I brought it up to my mother-in-law, she dropped decades worth of ghost stories onto me. For as long as everyone in this house can remember, there have been footsteps on the stairs. Some of them say loud, pounding, running footsteps. Very much what you'd expect for a haunting. Cabinets open, drawers open, doors opening and slamming by themselves. We hear footsteps from no one else's home. And cats have very aggressive reactions to all of this. Never any violence or anything like that. My childhood home was haunted. It was called a vortex of negative energy. From my mom's friend who claimed to bless the house. She said whatever was there had an interest in me. My bedroom had the most activity and as soon as she walked in, she said she felt sick. I moved out in 2016, but I think it's still with me. Around the fall of 2021, we started seeing things in the laundry room. My mother-in-law and I both saw a small black creature right behind the water heater. I did not get a very good look at it, but my, my, my mother-in-law said it looked like a tiny yeti. Very soon after, we saw the same thing outside, right in front of the house. I see it frequently now, usually out of the corner of my eye. As soon as I feel like I'm being watched, so I look and see it for a split second before it's gone. Every time we see it, we get a weird feeling. You're not feeling from being a child and hiding under the blankets because it feels like something terrifying is there? It is exactly like that. Around the summer of last year, my mother and I... My mother-in-law and I were in the basement. We both had that strange feeling. She was standing right next to a sheet that we had hanging from the ceiling acting as a room divider. It looked like a person was behind the sheet and it grabbed her. She felt it. I saw the sheet move and it looked like hands. Like someone tried to hug her, but the sheet... But with the sheet in the way. The cat's completely lost it. I've never seen that extreme... And have an extreme reaction to anything before. This calm down every once in a while, but that and then it will come back. Every time it does, it's more intense than the last time. My sister-in-law has a lot of this happening in her bedroom too, and we all feel that nervous something is wrong. On here, feeling in her closet, she also has things go missing frequently. In the basement, there is an old mirror that I like to keep covered because it kind of freaks me out, and I just feel the same about it. When the activity starts up again, the cover on the mirror always falls off repeatedly. The cats hate the mirror. I hate the mirror. Looking at myself in it just feels wrong, not natural. Nothing we've tried has worked. Holy water, blessing. I had a to come with sage, and that was the only thing that had an effect, but it still came back. The house I lived in as a child had some of the same stuff going on, and we never got to stop. I consider whatever it is came with me from that house. No one here saw anything ever until I moved in. It got much more intense once I was here. I have no idea what to do. None of us do. I cannot properly put into words how terrifying this thing makes me. It makes me nauseous. What am I supposed to do? The feeling was never this intense, even as a kid. I would also like to mention that my childhood home was also my mom's childhood home. And she had the same things happening when she was little. She would frequently see people around the house that would just vanish, like shadows. We heard voices, had strange dreams, we had voices calling our names, but we knew to so never respond. Also very strange, but when I was learning to talk, I would point out the big mirror and holler cry about the people I could see in a mirror. As I got older, it happened less and less. Once I was in school and learning about Indigenous people of America, I realized I think this is what I saw. There were just a few of them. They would just 
stand there and look at me. I remember them having lots of jewelry, lots of colors, feathers. So I was saying in the very front, had a walking stick or just a big stick. Am I crazy or misremembering or is that really what I saw? I don't know, but I have to know. My mom thinks they were, they were there to protect us from whatever was in the house. Does it sound like this thing followed me? What is it? <sighs> this one's very short. Anybody got experience with this kind of stuff? I got this book which has been in my family for decades apparently, and since I got there are really strange things happening around me. My father used to tell us stories about this other world and this evil bird creature which only our family can kill. My brother believes in all this mystical stuff and gets really excited, but to be honest, I'm just scared. Or at least not super excited. There's some thrill in relieving ink to be special, of course. It would be great if you guys have some advice. I just, I just have to deal with these kinds of things. Sounds like a TV show. Anyway, time for some sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis. The past two weeks, I had a realization that ha I haven't experienced sleep paralysis in a lot, long, long time. I was saying out loud to myself, wondering what it caused to recur episodes each night in my old house. So fast forward to two weeks and yesterday and the day before. I experienced them twice in a row. The first one I experienced was interesting. Because in the middle of it, as my day, as my eyes were open, my, bo my body was trying to move, I saw an almost probably like and I was like portal above my curtains, which were in front of my bed. And a strange arm crawled out of it before I woke up and it disappeared. The second time it happened, it was normal. There was nothing. So now I'm going on my third night. I hope they dispose everything strange happens. What do you think caused my sleep paralysis to occur again? Is it triggered by mine because I spoke of it? Or is it some demons that overheard me and thought it would be funny to mess with me? Either way, feel free to share a similar experience or an explanation. Ooh, an odd dream. I have a lot of those. Hmm. I'm. I do want to hear more stories about sleep paralysis. So let's go to this tag. Huh. I've woken up uh, up to weird sounds that came from my dreams. <laughs> this one just looks funny. Okay, that's enough sleep paralysis. That's gonna completely oversaturate the video and completely... ruin your guys' experience if I don't get some more 
normal stuff. No, I've heard a lot about shadow people recently. Who knows, maybe we really are nearing the end, aren't we? When I'm doing questions, because... One, I don't know if I really want to try and pretend that any of this is real, and two... I don't know how to deal with any of this. Anyway... Had an odd dream. When I was six or seven, I had a nightmare about tossing a softball at this faceless girl with red leggings. We were in a field next to a gray barn. It looked like it has been abandoned, and she failed catching it. And the only words I could remember was, You tricked me! And I haven't received any dreams since until last night. It was the same dream, but I recognized the sky writings better. It was a far repast every day, every time we went to my grandparents' house. I woke up a little confused, but I didn't think too much about it. It was fast, and yesterday, apparently, while they were building, earning down the older van, binary cross road, and road across center for reconstruction, they found half a body of a little girl with red leggings. I know this might sound crazy and made up, but I haven't been able to do anything. I can't get up. I feel paralyzed, like I was one who did it. Maybe it was just a coincidence, at least that's what I would like to believe. Get yeah, that. That is creepy as heck. Like, holy crap. Tall, skinny hat man. Hang on, we're gonna do this in a spooky voice. This happened around 1994 in. I don't know what state MA is. I think Massachusetts, maybe? That doesn't seem right. Anyway, he was tall and skinny with a cowboy hat, a, dukes, a dark silhouette with a, a hallway lit behind him, leaning against the door frame, watching me from the hallway, looking into the, my bedroom. It made my breath go away, then I was paralyzed for a long time. When I could finally move, I searched my whole heist. My whole house, why can't I speak, for signs of an intruder and found none. I was in 7th or 8th grade. I grew up getting sleep paralysis almost nightly until midway through high school. And as I would fall asleep while lying on my back, I'd slip into sleep paralysis. I would always feel it coming, but I couldn't escape the pole, if that makes any sense. It was just the only time I saw the man with the hat. I consider it the only time I've seen a ghost this day. The sleep process before and after that always involves shadowy figures moving around my bed that I could only sense in my peripheral. I remember I being a little kid, finding myself of locked in fear on my back while sleeping in or in bed with these shadows. I felt I could never let them know I was aware of them or they'd get me. I stopped getting sleep paralysis after one experience where I was feeling myself being pulled down into it. This is the only way to describe the feeling of transition from being in awake to being in sleep paralysis, like hands are pulling it downwards. This fear is not is not strong enough to pull three. Pull free. I were friends wanting to not be pulled down, so I pulled myself up out of the hands. And since then, I haven't had sleep paralysis. I remember it feeling like a balloon inside popped, and I suddenly knew I'd never get pulled down again, and I haven't since. 
Sometimes, I wonder if it was me, or if the three places I lived growing up happened to be haunted. Either way, I would never forget the fear I felt upon waking up and seeing the man with the hand in the doorway. I had always slept with my door open until that happened. Huh. What's with the, um... Internet's obsession with people and hats. We've got neckbeards with fedoras, now we've got weird shadow dudes, tall shadow dudes with hats. That I imagine might actually be based off of the a, a tall dude from um, Little Nightmares 2. Anyway, sleep paralysis panther. So I had the experience not long after me and my girlfriend woke up. A lot of spiritual knowledge. Oh, with any spiritual knowledge, please comment. I usually sleep laying on my back, but this night I was laying on my stomach. I wanted to roll all over, but couldn't move. I then realized I was in a sleep paralysis. I tried to speak. Nothing. I felt my burn. Vulnerability kick in. I wasn't scared. I just thought, okay, this is happening. Then I felt a large cat jump up, up onto my bed. In my mind's eye, it was a panther. I lay there in shock, as usually when I have sleep paralysis, it's a woman. The panther slowly crept up towards my head, and I could feel the bed being indented by the weight of its paws. It stood over me and pressed the stomach onto my back and was rubbing its face onto the side of my face, purring loudly. I could live off vibrations of the purring. I then tried to fight it and just let the scenario play out. It then jumped off my bed and I could instantly move again. It was very strange. I wonder if it's my spirit animal because they're pulling me because I just had a breakup or something. Or it could be a hallucination, but as you guys may know, these things feel very real and I don't know why I would hallucinate about a panther or a large cat. Well, as I understand when it comes to sleep paralysis, they aren't technically hallucinations. They're more like nightmares. Like, you're asleep during sleep paralysis, it's just that you see your surroundings, or what you think are your surroundings. And then your nightmares happen to leak into this snapshot of your surroundings. At least... That's how I understood it. I'm not sure if I'm right about that at all. Anyway. I just woke up to a deep growl in my ear and a male hand around my neck. I'm scared shitless. I'm not sure if it was sleep paralysis or well, but I woke up from a dream. I'm trying to fall back. I could sleep when I hear a deep growl in my ear, ear and a very male hand go around my neck. How how do you know it's a male hand? That's freaking rude. And it's growl in my chest. I couldn't move. Finally, I pry my eyes open and the feeling is gone. I'm now shaking and sitting in my room terrified. I've often felt that my apartment was haunted. When I first moved in, my door or used to close on its own. It would also open after I closed it. I shook it off as maybe it being air pressure or something. Things stopped happening once my older sister and her, her girlfriend moved in. Now, I'm not so sure. Could be a ghost. I wouldn't know. As I said, I'm just reading these because they spook. And then, and I'll wonder later why I'm spooked. Sleep paralysis is really scary. I understand of the century, but I've heard that a million times over. And I am inclined to believe it. I can move during it, but I can't talk. I can move my hands only. I can predict when 
this is going to happen because I'm usually dreaming and then I cannot use my hands in a dream and it fades out. Then I wake up and my bed starts spinning or sliding. It does that for a long time. Once I saw a guy sitting at the foot of my bed with a knife. Another time I saw faces full of creepy masks laughing and crying at me. I've also had moments where I cannot open my eyes even though I'm awake. I'm really used to this. It's because I've been experiencing it for 14 years on and off. I always have really creepy dreams and sleep paralysis at the same time. I'll be awake but dreaming and then and I feel the bed spinning. It's not in a drunk dizzy way, it's more in a gentle fast way. It's the most pleasant part. I just don't like sleeping sometimes, it's a bit scary. I always wake up and feel all like I'm being watched because of dreams I've had. <sighs> Sleep paralysis that continued despite already being awake. Alright, I'm going to tell you guys a little something. I remember a few years ago, I was exhausted. I did not get any sleep that is one night. So I'm just on the bus to school ish. I don't remember if it was school or the other thing. Staring out the window, kind of nodding off. And suddenly I see something terrifying that I don't even remember exactly what it was. It was just gory and messed up and it like scared the crap out of me. And I was half asleep because I was for that entire day half asleep. And I was not expecting it. It actually terrified me. Anyway. I've always hated sleep paralysis, but this one experience is what got me to another height of being terrified. I was all alone in this incident. A shadowy figure with long nose fingers that I could still vividly remember pressing my back as I was sleeping on my, on my left side being unable to scream or move around my paralysis, just facing the walls of my top bunk bed. Then even after waking up and realizing that I could already scream for help or move around, the nose and fin or fingers are still surprisingly around my back, enough so that it instantly jerked me to check out what the sharp thing was that I found on my back, despite the fact that I was already awake. I didn't even have time to raise myself over there was something ominous in the bottom of my bunk bed and I just went in the head and checked it out, fully expecting my little sister to be playing pranks on me. Only to dreadfully realize I was already alone in the house at around 8am, at school sites at 12pm. I would usually be left alone for a while given how everyone would go to work or school around 6am. I've had a fair share of sleep paralysis but this was the only time I've ever felt the paralysis continued even when I was already capable of screaming, looking for help or move ground, or just simply being awake already. Usually after screaming or trying my best to stretch ground, things would just turn back to normal and I would already be wide awake, with no traces of the ominous shadowy figure or usual paralysis exper experience. That is horrifying. And it's even more horrifying to like... wake up from that uh, and then just know and then realize that you were actually alone the whole time because then you don't even have someone to talk to about it destroyed my bedside fan because i thought it was a ghost as stupid as it sounds i woke up so i have a sleep and i always have my fan on during the night to block out traffic or, or neighbors as i was waking yep i swear uh, that fan looked like that creepy ghost girl off the ring. I really thought. Oh no. Hmm. Video still recording. We can finish this. Actually, I'm going to have to get back to this. 
I have some files to delete. All right, let's keep going. As I was saying, Drone finds into me is straight away. I saw him bed and smacked at. I bet the heart broke into five pieces and went flying across the room. Then I realized it was just my fan. It was just hard to get light outs, and so everything was my room was just so much shapes, which is how my brain must have interpreted it. At least I know well, now how my brain reacts when under threat and automatically. Now that this was fall under sleep paralysis, I've had similar experiences, but this time I reacted in a pissed off way. Real or just coincidence? So I recently made a friend who stayed with me a few weeks while he was going through some personal stuff. One day he asked me had I knows any people or anything in my yard the night before, and I said no. Oh, we get a lot of animals, raccoons and trees, deer, rabbits, cats, possums, etc. He said he didn't think it was an animal that he'd seen a shadow, and I would seen a shadowy humanoid figure in the dark under the giant and magnolia tree in my yard. Oddly enough, I did find some old ashes from a crematorium when I moved into the house 10 years ago. I had no way to identify them or know if I could send them to someone. So I throw the ashes under the, the magnolia respectfully in hopes to appease the spirit if there was one. I didn't want them just wasting away in a box, forgotten about. You think it's just a coincidence he said he saw that, or did I lay spirit to rest, hopefully, for real? We're gonna have to end the video soon. Shall we pour something else? This is not my story, this is a friend's story, and I need to... Ooh, find out what ha- I need help to find out what happened and what he can do. A couple of days ago, my friend parked his car in an underground garage, which was shared by the neighbors of the building, when he went to left the corridor, which was in, in the dark. He says he saw a yellow plastic bag floating, and when he went to get corridor turned into a dark room, where there was no switch or anything. The thing he saw was two guys approaching with hostility. He didn't think it was a paranormal situation at that moment. He thought they- they wanted to rob him. Great, now I'm getting paranoid. <laughs> anyway. Then that they were waiting for him. But something strange was going on. There was a switch and he was very scared. Plus two boys were red sick with strange movements. Turning their heads to one side and the other. With an expressionless, with an expressionless face. I thought he was talking about shadow entities. But these had half faces. And he says they were perfectly recognizable faces. When he had them without an arm's reach, my friend threw several punches at Pierce these beings. He saw that neither violence nor play worked. He took out his mobile a phone torch. And at that moment, the engines is disappeared and the corridor returned to a normal. My friend avoids that garage at all costs and sleeps with the lights on in his flat all day because of the fear he experienced. I have not been able to help him and because I only had experiences with shadow people. Does anyone know what kind of beings they are? Has anyone else had an experience where they seem to be somewhere else? What can you do? Your friend and, and fell into the back rooms. No, I'm kidding. We aren't that cringy around here. I hope. Anyway. The little girl. I spent most of my, my childhood in a small town in Pennsylvania. A childhood home that was long. Long since felt like a fever dream. Came to me. For as long as I could remember, my family will, will tell me stories about how a little girl would frequent the halls of my grandfather's home. He would see her peeking around the corner every now and then and hear her footsteps and hear her giggling from time to time. He even in, in self like objects from time to time. I had spent most of my summers at his place, so I'd go back home after some time there. One night, I woke up, sleeping at the foot of my parents' bed, and seeing a little girl dancing in front of me, spinning in circles with a dress I couldn't see the color of, because she was see-through. I hopped on my parents and hugged my dad while I cried myself silently back to sleep. 
One night, I woke up in our room, and I was sleeping on the top bunk. And for some reason, I was searching for my sister. I hopped down, looked under my bunk, and didn't see anybody there. Mind you, everybody in the house is fast asleep. I looked down the stairs, and there's one light on down, which led to our dining room. I then see a little girl walk from right to left, from S above the stairs into the dining room. I thought, oh, I found my sister, let me see what she's doing. I walked down the stairs and into the dining room, and there was nobody there. The kitchen was dark. The laundry room was as empty, and the back door was locked. I then went back upstairs to see my sister was fast asleep in the bottom bunk the whole time. There is no way she would have walked past me without me knowing. The house was always strange to me because I'd seen her from time to time, along with a very tall man who would walk our hallways from time to time. My older sister would also talk about how she had seen the little girl on different occasions, hear her giggles, and see her little footprints in a carpet throughout the house. Anyways, my grandfather passed not too long ago. My uncle says that the little girl has been moving through the ha his house. He lived with at my grandpa, as if she's looking for something. Hearing noises and movement, and way more frequently than normal, my grandfather passed. That's away in the ha hospital, and I believe she's upset that she hasn't seen him again, or that he never came home. She's never given up, even though seeing that she is an evil spirit, but she's just a lost soul that enjoys our company. I had a dream about my grandpa, and he was with the family and dad passed away a long time ago, so I know he crossed over. Rest in peace, grandpa. I love you. And I think that's a good spot to end the video on. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to keep an eye out for any tall people, particularly if they are made out of shadows. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. All I know is that until then, I have to say goodbye.